So today we'll talk about condition and loop and when we talk about loop we'll see some of the collections which is basically one or more type of data in a group right so you will find things like <clears throat> list of alphabets uh, or series of numbers something on that line where we will be talking about um, collection now let's understand condition <clears throat> now when you talk about condition so we define the condition using something called if now as the normal english suggests right it is a statement which based on based upon the validation of this statement we will do something or if it is not valid we'll do something else so that's the concept of if right so if you think about like uh, a student of a school and you decide like if this student is studying at standard eight, then we will do something. If this student is studying standard nine, we'll do something. Now what happens when this if condition doesn't fulfill, that means the student is not studying in standard eight, then we provide something called else. So that's a combination if else okay so we'll see how that syntactically looks like imagine you have a number okay let's not use any variable let's directly use that so if takes care of the true or false statement okay so the condition is either true or false now in python there is a data type called boolean okay which indicates either true or false only two values so if you define a variable of type boolean then you can assign either true or false or you can directly say true so the simplest form of if statement could be like this so if it is true <clears throat> and then you put a sem colon that means it ends the statement then what if it is true you say this is true okay that's a print we can do other things also we can do let's say assign a roll number to the student if in that case we get a student we'll find what is the last roll number and then we assign the new roll number to that student now if you just simply run this statement okay so to see what exactly is happening around so i can just say this is true if i let's say have something like false then what happens in this if i run then it says that there is nothing getting printed because this is definitely not true hence the line number six is not happening in those cases we need to actually see what is exactly not happening to do that we have an option and that is what we define as else in this case we say else this is false if you say so and you run this what happens now this will print this is false because <clears throat> this if condition is not coming to this line number six at all because it is false so the if always checks for a true statement right what happens with the condition you provide if it is correct or true then you move ahead and do something else you do something that's the concept now instead of true false if we start putting our actual condition if two is greater than one so in uh, programming you use this uh, greater than symbol to indicate if let's say to check whether something is bigger than other thing so in number it is quite straightforward two is definitely bigger than one right that's true statement so instead of me typing true i am just pressing that um, value two greater than one <coughs> now if this is the the program if i run it now it will print this is true because this is a true statement if we happen to change this number to let's say 10 
Now this is false because true is two is not greater than ten. Okay, so this is a false statement. So it will say this is false. Now we can actually put a right statement in the print saying that two is not greater than ten. Okay, just to be very explicit about what we are trying to achieve. But this is just a an idea about how we can write this kind of syntax. Okay. Now we understand that we have a true false condition. We can actually replace them with a variable. So I can say a equal to one, b equal to two. Now if I say if b greater than a, which is right or true, then it will print true statement. So you can just replace them with a variable. Okay. Now if I let's say change this a to two. Okay. And then we try to execute this statement this will say false but it is neither true nor false because they are equal in mathematics they are equal they are both the same number but two different variable <clears throat> now to check the equality of two values in case you need to check you can use this equals twice two times if you use this equals two times then it will check the equality of the of the two numbers or two values you specify. Now in this case, if we go ahead and run this, <clears throat> and this will say true, right? Because B is equal to A. Now I change a bit uh, to let's say three. Now it's gonna go ahead and uh, say it is false because this is not at all right because B is now greater than A. It's not equal to A. Now this is how you keep adding the condition. For example, if you say if B is greater than or equal to, now you can mix and match two conditions, which means you are checking both whether B is greater than A and B is equal to, or, or B is equal to A. That's what it means, right? So any of the statement, if it is true, then it will give print out the statement called this is true. So let's see. If I run this and run the Python, this is true. Now, if I change the value of A to, let's say, 3, then this will also print true because it is now going to check the equality of that. Now, I'm doing both the condition here. Either B should be equal or get greater is what we are trying to check here. So, we can mix and match the condition. Now, <clears throat> this is one way of thinking now let's say you want to put this condition in two different if statement it is possible you can define two different if statement but you can have the if statement in nested condition which means that we have something called elif elif is another if condition within the if condition now this elif says b equal to a okay and then I say print and I print B is E equal to A. Now this equal has to be double. Okay. Now if I run this, this will say B is equal to A. B is not greater than A. So it did not print there. B is equal to A is true. Then it is printing and it is coming out. Now it is you notice here it is not going to print the else statement once this finds a true statement it basically comes out it breaks everything and then it comes out so it doesn't really check everything okay so in the case of let's say b equal to greater than or equal to a if i put this condition then what will happen let's see what will happen this will print the true statement because the first if statement is valid because b is now equal to a it is both greater and or equal to a and that's why it is printing true however the line number eight that is l if where we are saying b equal to equal to a is also true but because it came out of the statement it did not print the second print statement okay so it basically did not do that if you let's say do it in a separate if condition like this then it will print both the print statement because they are now two different if statements okay so let's see 
how the print looks like. Now there will be two messages printed. One is this is true for the line number 6 and then it will be printing b is equal to a for the line number 9. Okay. So because we just broke the if condition into two separate if condition and it's now going to check every if condition. It's not a nested if condition. So that's the difference between the nested if condition versus the separate if conditions. Okay. So in many cases you might have to do that kind of approach. So depending on the condition you will write an if condition. Now we can also check the equality of a and b. <clears throat> Let's say I change this a to a and b to b. Okay. If I do that and I run this. Now we used number. Now this is string. So we're trying to check if a equal to b. It's definitely not equal to b. Even if I say small a it's not right so it's not true but the moment i say both are a then it will say b is equal to a so the, you can see that we can even check the other types of variables not just the numeric value but also the value now if you let's say use this b and try to put a numeric condition. Now let's see what happens. So it says B is equal to A. Okay. Why? Now let me just change this statement to greater. Otherwise there will be a confusion. So B is greater than A. That's what we are checking here and that's why we are printing. Now why this is printing like this? Let's run this. Because in alphabetical order, A comes first and then B comes. So if you print capital A and capital B, B is considered the bigger in value for computer. Okay, it's a purely computer calculation because the alphabetical order is represented by some numbers internally and those places are basically uh, based on the sequence of the alphabetic alphabet we use in our uh, pro English language right so if you use another thing like small a okay now it says b is greater than a because in computer when we assign <clears throat> places for alphabets we assign the places for capital letters first and then small letters. That's why you see that B, it is fulfilling the condition in the line number 8. That is B is greater than A. Okay. Now we change this to <clears throat> let's say B. Okay. Uh, let's say and then run this. Now this will be false because b is greater than a it is false so it is not true so you can do this kind of thing for other kind of values also for example date for example time um, etc <clears throat> you can even check things like let's say boolean value that is true and then if you say b equal to false and then if you try to check this let's see what happens it's saying this is false because b is not greater than a the reason why in binary number format the true is one that is number one and false is number zero okay so if you change this condition to let's say b a greater than b that means this sharp end towards whatever number is a smaller number now let me also change this to true so that we don't have a confusion if i run this now it will print the true statement because now 
the true that is a is greater than b so we can write it in a different way so that there is no confusion b okay so if you write like that that means the same thing which we did, have written before but that is more clear because we think from left to right so let's also read from left to right a is greater than b that is true because true is one which is greater than zero so you just simply think from a computer perspective everything is number okay so there is a place there is an allocated location based on that non-numeric values i'm talking only about non-numeric values will be considered as a sequence okay so you have this if condition which basically talks about whether it is bigger or smaller etc okay so any question so far uh, for this condition because this will keep coming in your programming whenever you start writing the application so you have this kind of uh, many different if condition and i'll share this link with you which will basically talk about how you can write this if condition now one of the things i already shared with you is a official documentation for python now to find the official documentation for python you just um, go to sorry python documentation or doc and it takes you to the python documentation portal and you see that there are different uh, versions available <clears throat> so we have now python 3.10 huh? you can check which python you are running in your local machine by running uh, just a simple python command okay so if you just go here and you say pi you say pi you say 3.9 so uh, currently i'm running 3.9 so if i go back into my um, website and then go to 3.9 and you have this many different options now it is very difficult to find let's say which one you want to search so you go and search for the if statement just search it okay and it will take you to the if statement some link okay and you will find that they, they have also given a little bit of explanation and how to let's say write certain type of code now you may not find the right thing for the first time but you can actually go ahead and check let's say what is available so if i go back into the let's say documentation and i say docs and i say python docs i just wanted you to explore this go to 3.9 whichever version you are currently running in your local machine you have a language reference which has got a syntax etc now you can see that it has got so many things right and it should have one of the things called if statement so what you can do if you don't find it you search in the browser control f and say if condition okay so that's a if statement if you click here it basically tells you how that format looks like for the if statement okay and then elif else etc is part of that and it's a boolean condition that is true or false so that's a small explanation available but for you to practice you might need something which is very um, generic in nature right so for example you might need to um, take care of multiple if conditions so if you have those kind of scenario then how do you handle that uh, in the in the context of if condition so that is what we mean to say over here is that you need some uh, reference which will guide you to explore more to know what is exactly so one one of the things i wanted to also talk about programming when you learn programming right you need to keep practicing many different options so i show only few but that's not the only thing you uh, you have in programming so there could be many more so keep exploring that that way you will learn more now 
if is apparent is simple so we kind of have covered the if mostly now let's understand what is loop now before we go into the loop what i wanted to also do uh, tell you what is the problem we are trying to solve here in the loop so let's say a, a variable a which is a value of three now if i have a condition say if a equal equal one then print it is the value is one now let's put the english one okay that way it makes more sense then we are just typing the proper value now i say l if a equal equal to i say print two okay that's the second condition third condition is like a equal equal three and then i say print three a couple of them uh, and then i have a else condition which says print the value is not valid i didn't want this value okay so that's that's the whole context i uh, just come out of this and i will say clear and i run this python day three now it says three okay because the value of three is three it is satisfying this condition and it is printing three if i just change the value to two then you get two okay so you basically have this thing printed based on that now if you have to do this or uh, print all the numbers of a uh, of a series of numbers let's say one to ten then it'll it'll be very difficult for you to write this if statement again and again and again in the in the context like this so if you have work with let's say 1000 numbers that will probably write 1000 plus lines to do that that's not efficient programming so programming is all about making things easier so let's un understand how we can deal with this series of things okay so now we will talk about something called loop so loop is going through again and again for a set of things so for example if you have to um, <clears throat> identify each member of your class um, you actually go one by one so you first um, go to the student number one you identify that person and you go to the second student go to the third student so on and so forth right so that's what i'm talking about the collection set of things now i can define a collection in python like this so it it can be defined using square bracket it can be defined using uh, first bracket now if i use square bracket and then if i type only five numbers for the time being let's make it simple and if i have to do something um, for this let's say again and again let's say print them all one by one what i can do i can run something like a loop and loop starts with a keyword called for now for is for loop okay now you can say any number let's say n in num and this n can be anything so it can be i it can be j it can be anything this means that every time it reaches this number it will pick up one at a time so first it will pick one then two then three then four then five so it will go in sequence whatever the sequence i have mentioned on top okay that sequence now you want to print that and say the number is and i say n if i just type this and try to run it'll give you an error because it is not a string okay so i'll say str just a conversion okay or i can use the format option to format it so let's just leave with this and you can see that the number is one to five 
now this is going through now it can happen for any kind of number without me changing the line of code no matter what I add it will still print that I can directly jump to 100 okay that's not a problem and then it prints everything so it becomes easier and it just has two lines okay even if I am using let's say 11 or 12 numbers I don't have to write 11 or 12 if statements I can actually put that in a two line syntax now beyond that you can do a lot of fancy stuff so for example if you have to let's say print the output one by one we just say print n that's probably the simplest option and I just print it'll print all the numbers if you let's say want to do a calculation uh, and then that calculation is a multiplication table so for example you want to build a multiplication table for 19 so you go start from 1 go up to 10 and it will print the multiplication table for 19 if you do that you see that multiplication table for 19 is printed for you just two lines okay you don't have to do multiplication for each of the occurrence so that's the quick way of doing things for multiple repetitive tasks now I want to actually make it a bit more nice looking result if you say result equal to and then you say I want to print whatever value into whatever value that's what we learned in the string how to format it and then I can use this instead of star I can use this X just to indicate that it's a multiplication and the result is let's say the second argument and if you say so what happens you can actually use dot format string dot format and pass on the value so first one will be the number I want to create table for let's say 19 second one is the number coming from my n variable and the third one is the result that is 19 into n okay now if you do so you know try to print that out I didn't print it out so let's print it out result and I just say this you get the table well printed now you can print any multiplication table you just replace this with a variable let's say b okay and I say 19 and instead of fixed value 19 I use this as b if you do so then it will give you the same output the benefit is that next time you want to create a multiplication table for 5 you just change one thing that is b and things will be just replaced okay it's a, a multiplication table for number 5 like that you can actually build multiplication table for every number from 1 to 10 and then you can actually do a nested for loop now let's understand that now this is the for loop now assume that I'm also running a for loop for the same number okay so if I say for m in or let's use b in num all right one loop for all the values second loop for doing the multiplication now if you are doing a nested um, thing what you need to do you need to indent it which means you have to put it below this for loop just press tab when you select it it goes shifts so it is now part of this okay now what happens this b is starting from one that's the b okay this is not the b okay we'll hide this so this is the b starting from let me delete that one and then it goes through 1 to 10 becomes 2 goes to 1 to 10 now if I try to print this out what also I needed to print is 
I will print a separator so that you know the difference. All right. Now let's say I want to print this out. You see that <clears throat> it is starting from here. Okay. So it starts from one, prints the table for one, then goes to two, prints the table for two, then goes for three, then four, then five, up to ten. Okay. Now if someone asks you to make a multiplication table for up to 20 you can just say that I want to add this so on and so forth let's add all of them okay that's all this is the data you are passing and rest all the small logic of let's say five or six lines remains the same that's the beauty of loop okay so let me clear it up and run it now you see here it is, there is a problem because this time the table is starting from 1 but it's not ending at 10 because my series is this now what I can do I say B's I say num and then I pick up this series up to 10 I finish it off and I say B's that is whatever the B value so I just use the B's up to 20 but num is 10 now we cannot always use the same series again and again in this case we need two different series now if I run this now this problem will not be there now you see here it can create table for up to 20 but it's now going till 10 it's not going up to 20 so you can see that all the 20 number is now part of my table which you can easily print and then stick it to your uh, desktop if you wish to right so printing or making number table is damn easy in programming language and that's why we use programming language to automate a lot of mundane tasks repetitive tasks that's the whole idea okay the idea of programming language is to make things simple and repetitive now one of the things i wanted to also talk about let me delete this whole thing is that you probably have heard of the division so if i say uh, i have this 10 and a is equal to 2 and if i print the value of a uh, b divided by a the result will be 5.0 okay so that's what we learned earlier so let me show this up that will be 5.0 that's a simple uh, mathematical calculation if i happen to have this 2 to 3 then this will give me 3.33333 whatsoever it is value now this is not a perfectly divisible so there is a reminder okay uh, to what is the reminder here the reminder is one so if you try to divide 10 by 3 the reminder is always be one okay if you try to divide this now i want to know the reminder just to get the reminder not the the division there is a dedicated symbol available okay and that symbol is this percentile sign this is not a percent percent calculation it's a reminder calculation now this will give me an output of one if you try to let's say um, divide 10 by 7 it will give you an output of 3 because you try to divide 10 by 7 the reminder will be 3 that's what it is right now for certain um, type of number reminder can be either zero or some value if you see here that if you use 10 it is zero if you use 11 it is one if you use 12 it is zero so by dividing two we can identify whether there is a reminder or not if there is a reminder then it is something we call as even number 
okay you know that in mathematics you probably have used odd and even number so the odd number is cannot be divided by two uh, then there will be reminder if there is no reminder that is zero reminder then it is even number now if you have to find what all even numbers you have in a series of numbers now what you can do you can use this mathematical symbol to calculate that's why i try to explain you that okay so if you say series is this one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and then i say for n in nuns print print um nums now there is a condition here which is even or which is not even now within a for loop we can use if condition to check whether we are matching with the condition let's use the if condition so if you use if and we say num not num n because we are dealing with only one number at a time modulo 2 is equal equal zero then it is even then print the number otherwise don't print okay simply don't do anything that means don't do anything so what it will do now it will print number two four six eight and ten which are the even numbers so let's see how that looks like in the output so it prints two four six eight and ten so you can see now how easy it is to calculate all the even numbers now i can put a random value any value and it will tell you what are the even numbers just by doing this simple calculation right this is just a very simple calculation we are doing to figure out what kind of um, value we are using over here right so you can see that now i am having this program which is just a three line code can fetch any even number from any series irrespective of whatsoever the total number that series contains okay if it is one or more doesn't really matter so i don't have to put multiple if conditions if i have to do something in a repetitive way for example i want to put this else condition to check whether it is at all coming and i say print odd number and then i pass on str and n that's odd number okay and i just put the value over here and what else do I, have i done anything wrong no that looks fine now it will print everything but it will tell me what are the odd numbers so you can see that it is actually going through each of the number in earlier condition i because i did not have anything under else it was not printing anything it was just printing whatever it is fulfilling the condition for now you can see that this is nice okay another um, nice thing i wanted to show you is when you have a sentence okay let's say a statement or i say comment i say python is a great and easy program language that's a sentence okay so that's definitely a complete sentence i have written now i can do a for loop for this and then i say l in comment what happens if i print l any guess what will happen if i print l any it will print comment in vertical way uh, can you repeat please uh, it will print the the string value of comment in vertical way each of the letter huh? 
Ah, that's correct. Yes, it will basically do that. So that's absolutely correct. So it will pick up each letter, including the space. Okay, so you will find that it will be printing things in a vertical way. Exactly. So let's see that output. So you can see that it started with Python. Now there was a space. Okay, that's why there's a gap. And then is there's a space, there's a gap. Now we can put a condition saying that I don't want to um, take the space. So ignore it. So you can put a if condition. But we are not going to do that. So let's not make it complex. But it is printing each of this. So when you run these things against a word or a sentence for a string, this is coming as individual letters or characters okay so it basically is going to print all of them one by one okay that's what the loop for uh, string uh, would make sense right there is another kind of loop which is available also and that is called while loop uh, so we'll we'll use that yeah and that is called while loop what is while loop so while loop is something we keep doing till something happens okay so imagine that we are doing a number loop right we had a series of number but we can write number in a very random way for example if i say nums and then i can also say 100 50 25 3 I can have this number and if I have this number and then I print n in nums and I print n that means it's gonna go ahead and print all these numbers as per the sequence how it is declared so it will print starting with 100 and then 50 then 25 and then 3 so that's how the sequence is whereas in the while loop so i'll just keep it handy so that you can refer while loop it is always the incremental sequence or decremental sequence depending on how the sequence looks like so while as the name suggests starts with a keyword while now there is some value called x and that x has to be declared so let's say I start x with 0. You can start x with 1. That's absolutely fine. Now, till what time I want to do that? Till it is less than 10. That's my while condition. Okay. Now I print x. Now if I simply run this, it's not going to stop. It will be an infinite thing. Why? Because... I did not put a condition to increment it so to increment we need to increment either by one two whatever way I want to increment so for example I want to increment this x by one if I say so then I say x equal to x plus one so the new value of x will be x plus one that's what it means so which means that if I have x as 1, then next x will be 2, next one 3, so on and so forth. Okay. Now let's see what happens. It prints all of them. 1 to 9. But it did not print 10 because I did not put a condition. I ignored the 10. So I, if I put less than equal to, then it will print 10. So that's when you use less than equal to. Or we use a number more than 10 that is 11 then also it will print 10 okay so 1 to 10 is printing that's fine that's absolutely fine now what happens when you let's say start with a number and go a lot larger okay so for example i want to go up to 100 let's not say 1000 but up to 100 i don't do anything it's just doing the same thing repeat right all the thing it has to repeat is just by adding another value and print that value. 
and it's doing happily without me changing anything and inside the loop you can put a condition so for example if I put a condition over here saying that if x at any given point in time is equal to equal to 50 or 5 let's put a 5 okay then stop break means stop so you can use break to stop the loop so you upon any condition you can loop so for example you are going through each of the student name and you are finding somebody called john if you find that student john you don't have to go through thousands of students in a school or a city so you may have let's say few hundred students in a school now if you have to find one student and you give a provide a search string of the name called john and then the john comes after let's say 50th time then you don't have to run the loop for the rest remaining because your purpose is solved so that's when we use loop so let's see what happens okay if i run then it'll print up to four okay because the fifth one when it reaches fifth one it just comes out now if i put let's say this break before then it will print also five that will clear up the confusion one to five and it's done with if i say 15 now as soon as it reaches 15 it's gonna go ahead just break so you can see that you can put also if condition without within the loop thing right when the loop is done okay you can also use a print statement that it is done but to do that you can come out and say print done while if you say so it's gonna say done while now let me increase uh, decrease the number to something like uh, seven okay and remove this if condition and keep incrementing the value now what happens in this this is when everything is fine now when things are not fine we can also use else now this else is the else for while not for if okay so let's not confuse here so what this else means is that when the while loop ends then print done while we can do also in this way so that it is part of the while loop okay what happens when the while loop ends is part within the while loop okay, so that's else within the while loop you can use that like break you have something called continue or pass so for example i want to only print um, um values I don't want to print the value number at three let's put it that way okay so if that's the condition i'll say if x equal to equal to three then pass okay so let's see what happens it prints why because we have the print statement outside of the if so it is passing but it is printing here so if we put this condition inside of the if statement now let's see what happens It prints three only three because the condition is fulfilled and then it is coming inside the if condition and rest, rest all it's not doing anything so you have multiple different ways one is you can break it you have seen it earlier you can pass it you can even say continue doing nothing so 
you can use these three things within the if condition uh, within a while loops so if you have to let's say do something to break the chain or do change the way it is printing right otherwise it will normally keep printing everything uh, keep working on every element it is incurring to now let's say I want to say x is less than 20 but this time I'm gonna increment by 2 not by 1 if I so say so it will print all the values from 1 to 19 but only plus 2 so if you start with 0 then it will give you a better output start with 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 so on and so forth because we are incrementing this x by 2 so we can increment this x by 3 so on and so forth so it will create a sequence of number based on how you want to increment that value okay so it can be quite dynamic so every step you can actually um, have the value of x as the square of x okay so it will be very big number okay so let's say i want to put this large number and i want to run this i cannot start with one so maybe i start with two so it, which will make sense and then i just start this now you can see that it is printing only few values that is the square of two four 4 square is 16, 16 square is 256, square of 256 is this much, okay? So that's the kind of thing you're getting at this point in time. Okay, so this is the while loop. So you can do a lot more stuff with while loop. Again, I would recommend that you go to the official documentation like this page okay and then you have something about while statement okay and then it basically talks about break continue and all this stuff right so you can see that the break statement what is the break statement signifies continue signifies all this you can read a bit and understand a bit more so I think we are almost at the end of our class. So any question so far at this point in time? Sir, can I ask something? Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, in the print, when we are printing two different things, uh, you use a black symbol. Uh, can we use comma? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can use comma. You can use comma. So. Let me hide this. So you can actually say print. Hello. I put a space and then I say hello world. Okay, this will print hello world. Okay, very simple. Concatenating two strings, adding two of them. Now you say that I want to print this comma now what happens with the comma let me also tell you that okay it also prints both the strings but at this point in time it is printing with extra space which means if i just remove this space you will probably find that this is coming as a proper hello world you can print two string values separated by comma Uh, while we were sh showing the loop, uh, if we want to print the multiplication table of 1 to 1000, so we have to enter 1 to 1000 numbers in a variable. No, no, that's a good question. Very good question. So for that, I didn't uh, talk about it today. We have something called a range variable. Okay. And range has a definition like this. Okay, so you start with one, you stop at thousand. That means it is a series of number, sequential number 
from 1 to 1000 with one incrementation sorry so if you run a for loop let's say and say n in range of 1 to 1000 and then print n that will print all the thousand values okay so you don't have to type all of them you can see that it's printing so it has printed up to 1999 right so you have this range of values from 1 to 1000 all and then you can also define let's um, make it a smaller one so that uh, you can see it clearly over here so if i say this oh, sorry if i say run this and you can see that it's 1 to 99 if you need 100 you just go up to 101 and also there is something called a step so you can say that i want to only print the even numbers or odd numbers or whatever that is so you start with zero and then say one to one and then you start that you see that it prints from a zero two four six eight that's step okay we're jumping by two we can jump by five also so that's a jump okay so you can actually define a large series of numbers based on how that sequence would look like normally it is jump with one otherwise you can explicitly say the jump value in the third parameter and that's what we use at range so range is something which can give you a list pre-created list so if you say lst sorry lst equal to range and then you use this lst here that's the same thing okay it's exactly the same thing right so any other question yeah can you please uh, just upload the link of the python documentation in the google group yes i will do that um, i will have you given a video of how to download audio visual from cool. mm, can you repeat please mm -hmm. sorry uh, have you given the link 